So I'm gonna go through how to replace the rivnet. I uh, never knew the proper name of this, but it's basically, it's the insert that goes into the frame that has threads. And then you can go ahead and put your water bottle cage, you could put your pump mount or whatever your lock mount, and then go ahead and throw, screw your bolt right into it. So this piece right here goes into the frame and then it gets compressed from the inside and it basically locks it in there, compresses it between the, the inside of the frame and the outside of the frame. I'm gonna start off with a drill bit, um, a little bit smaller. I think M5 insert is pretty common, most common, but this bike is probably over 20 years old, has a smaller riv nut, a smaller insert, so I'm gonna use a smaller drill bit. Just gonna, just doesn't quite fit through the hole, but it's not wider than the lip of the outside. So this is definitely gonna destroy whatever threads are there that are existing, but we're break, trying to break away material. And always, always gotta come in nice and straight. You don't wanna come in at a slight angle and then just go for it. Hang on to the drill real nice and tight. I might wanna spin in your hand and hurt your wrist. So grip it nicely. Try not to push too much pressure and hit the bottom of your frame on the inside. So got rid of all the threads there. I can still see the rivnut walls are still there. So we're gonna go a little bit bigger. So not knowing what size the original hole in the frame is, um, I don't wanna overshoot that hole. I'm gonna try and keep it to where it is. So I'm not gonna to go to a bigger drill bit. I'm actually gonna start working on the outside of the lip. I'm gonna use a little die grinder or a, a Dremel tool that has a sharp little blade. So this here is, it's a Dremel. I just got this, it was an 8220. Got it off of Amazon. Uh, it was about like 130 or something. It came with the kit with a bunch of other attachments. But, and we're just gonna slowly start to thin out the lip of that rev nut and hopefully get it loose enough to where it'll just drop into the frame. If it drops into the frame, then if you're worried about that rattling around, most likely we're gonna have to take out your bottom bracket or your headset or somewhere where there's an opening and then we can just rotate the frame and get that piece out so it's not rattling constantly. So this is when I was drilling. So here's the lip I'm talking about. This little ridge right here, where my pick's getting caught on. Again, that's probably about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half thick. Um, you're trying to wear that down but not hit the frame. Go ahead and put in your safety glasses. So this kind of flex is it's on a spring, which is nice. So you can kind of put a little pressure and get some flex there and we can slowly start to wear it down. Remember to put on your safety glasses. We're gonna get going here. Sorry if this is a little loud. All right, so now it's just gonna try some different methods, different tools to see if we can I'm gonna apply a little side to side pressure, see if this thing's getting loose. Definitely see the inside walls breaking down. I think we can go a little bit bigger with the drill bit. So this kind of gives me a little more idea of what I can do here. So we're gonna go slightly bigger with the drill bit. So if we got, we're using a, an M5 riv nut that's gonna go into this frame. I'm unsure what he's here now. It could be an M4 or an M5. M5 is gonna be larger. If we wanna drill the rest of this material out, uh, we're gonna use a 1964 and replace it with an M5 riv nut. That's what I have on hand. So right now this is a 1964, it doesn't quite fit. So there's still material, riv nut material we need to get rid of, that I know for a fact. So hopefully this will get the material out without going any larger into the frame. If you're using an M4 riv nut, which is the next size smaller, we're gonna go with a 1764 drill bit. But let's see if this is true. We're gonna use the 1964 and just get that material out. So this is what we did here. We went in there, took the rest of the material of that rivnet out. And now we got that hole there. So now we're gonna see what rivnet fits nicely. And we're gonna go ahead and place that in. So basically it's gotta fit. A little bit of wiggle, side to side wiggle. Main thing is that that lip is gonna sit where it's supposed to. So there's plenty of lip sitting on the outside of the frame and staying in place. I think that's, that's the one, but we can experiment. That was an M5. This is an M4 going smaller. So it definitely got a lot of wiggle there. It almost falls in completely even with the, uh, the lip of the metal there. And this is an M6 going bigger. Oops, doesn't even fit in the hole. So a little beefier. Um, I don't know what the weight or the, the strengths are on these. They don't um, give that. I'd have to probably research right, that. Works great. So the 1964 drill bit works great for this hole. 
Um, that's, that'd be my go-to, and then go ahead and replace with, a, with an M5, which is your most common on the bicycle. So now we're gonna get into the, um, the pop rivet gun, or whatever they're calling this thing here. Uh, what is the proper term? Rivet Nut Setter 39-300. This is a, by Marson. It's a professional. So I think I believe I got this from either eBay or my distributor, not eBay, but um, Amazon. And it came with three, they're calling these man mandrels. So three different mandrel sizes and they're numbered, uh, number 10, number 11, and number eight. So eight, I guess those are the most common. Um, so the one I, that fit actually, that kind of found out what was going on. I'm using my, my M5 rivet that actually threads on here. So right now it comes in a locked position. So you got uh, an adjusting screw and then you have your lock nut screw, very common. Like uh, if you're working on a hub or a crank set or something like that. So basically unscrewing this guy. So now <clears throat> it opens it up all the way. I believe that's open fully and then it's on the spring. So we're gonna squeeze, basically we're just gonna squeeze once and that's gonna crush your riv nut and lock it into place. So let's go ahead and set that. So we're setting this as a number 10, push that all the way through. And then we're gonna screw on our riv nut with the lip going on first. It's like, uh, I'm gonna screw that on all the way and get flush there. So now we got that little bit of space right here. Okay, and once you got that on, it's nice and flush down here at the bottom with the tip of the mandrel. We got that space here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push this down on the table, pushing this up, creating the gap right here. So now we're gonna turn the big knob here on top, but we need to hold the mandrel still. So I'm gonna hold this with two fingers and then start unscrewing this, unscrewing counterclockwise, which is gonna take up any space that's here and just want to make sure that nothing's going on down here. We still flush down here at the bottom. You can always make a small adjustment to your riv nut to make sure it's uh, flush at the tip. But I got a little bit of space here at the top, right where my right fingernail is. We're gonna keep unloosening until I basically bottom out. So now this top nut bottomed out against the mandrel, which where all the space was. Now we have a space here, which is fine. Now we want to make sure that this bottom lock nut is nice and tight. So I'm going to actually started to migrate. So I'm going to bring it back down. Just made contact with the base here of the gun. So I'm going to hold this top one with my fingers, make sure this doesn't move. And I'm going to snug up this bottom with, with fingers. That's good. Just two fingers. You don't need to grab a tool. So now we have no more space. If I push top and bottom, no more gap. The gap is actually taken up with these two guys right here, this, the adjusting and lock nut. So now we're ready to go. No space is what we want. Now we can come and go ahead and stick it into the frame, make good contact, and then go ahead and squeeze. We'll, we'll be finished. Now we're going to install the whole gun with the rivet all one unit. And make sure, again, that we're nice and straight up and down. You don't want to be crooked over to the left or to the right or back or forward. Try and just be nice and straight. I know it's hard to tell because we got this angle of the frame, but basically the base of this nut just wants to sit flat against the frame. And then this might be difficult too, but we're gonna squeeze. Most likely we're gonna need two hands. And with this one, it just takes one full squeeze. It's not gonna squeeze and then choke up and grab again. So as long as you're nice and straight, you can stop in the middle if you had to. You can re readjust your grip, but just continue and right about there, I made full contact, but the, the gun still allows you to flex. So I'm gonna flex, I'm basically gonna go as hard as I can, but I think that's it. And then if I let it release and try again, nothing else happens, it just basically goes back to the stop point. So it did its job, now I can go ahead. So we're still attached here. So what I need to do is, so we have spacing here, which is normal. Now we need to unscrew the mandrel from our riv nut. So we're gonna use the top here And if you see other nuts turning, you can, so now we're unscrewing this whole mandrel, which is connected to the base here. And there we go. So these threads just came loose and we're good to go. It feels nice and tight. You can go ahead and test it.
So, broke out the torque wrench here. This is a number four Allen tool. I set this to about seven Newton meters, which is more than enough to tighten this up. It's probably gonna be what most of you are tightening your cables to or even over tightening them to. So this is gonna click and pivot right away. So it's still turning. So that hits seven Newton meters. So that's, that's pretty tight. It's, it's definitely tight enough for your water bottle cages, your pumps, uh, whatever else you're gonna throw on there, some racks. Um, it can probably take more. Let's go up to 10. Actually, I'm gonna go up to 11. Which uh, can be very similar to, say, suspension bearing pivot bolts. We're getting in that neighborhood. So tightening, turning, turning. So at this point, now I'm fearful of the threads of the bolt getting destroyed rather than the rib nut spinning. So the rib nut's not spinning, it's not breaking free. Uh, bolt's still going. I just don't want to destroy the threads. I think that's more than enough. The, if the rivet nut was going to fail, it would have failed by now. So I'm going to unloosen. You can see this tool start to flex. And that's how, judging, that's giving you an idea how tight this bolt is. So just that right there. So the bolt's definitely tight. So I'll just keep going until this breaks free. Oof, there it goes. So no problem. Ends in and out. So pretty happy with the internal threads. Throw a little grease on your bolts and you'll be good to go. So here's the package that the uh, Riv Nut gun came in. RN-1 Riv Rivet Nut Setter. And uh, they give you the three mandrels. And then this is the kit I bought for, this is a, it's by Home Vale, H-O-M-V-A-L-E, never heard of them. Uh, just gave them a shot. Just, uh, mixed zinc plated carbon steel Riv Nut rivet nut, excuse me, assortment. So gives you M10, M12, M6, M8, M3, M4, and M5 open. Yeah, so you got big, I think uh, going a little bit smaller. So M5s are right here, M12, M10, M4, M3. And then this is the tool I got, this is the Dremel. The 8220 variable speed, 10 to 30, I'm not sure what that is, RPMs, so maybe it's probably 3000s or something like that, in thousands. Um, on off switch, got the cutting blade with the built in spring. Put a tool here, hold that, unscrew it, attachment will come out, it's no issue. Super happy with this, cordless. We can hang this if I guess if we have to, but happy with that. Came with the charger. And the battery right here, it actually looks very similar to my older Bosch uh, hand, my hand electric gun. So who knows if it's the uh, same company, just put a different name on it. It came with some attachments here, but I also got another box that has like um, 100 or 200 more pieces of, of, you know, sanding, little grinders, steels, steel, blah, blah, blah. So far, really happy with it and uh, I would recommend it. You guys find this helpful, go ahead and give me a like, give me a subscription, hit that notification bell so you know when some new projects are coming up. If you have any uh, questions, hit me on the comments and if you have any uh, issues with something you want to create a video, just let me know or uh, see you next time.